Hello, dear students. In this lecture, we will be discussing specially what is physics. This is a motivational lecture for class 11 and 12 and undergraduate physics major who are BSc students in Indian standard. So for them, if you are still a master students or some higher level students, you can still listen to this video properly. And I believe that you will have many, many, many things to listen, many, many things to know. So especially uh, this is uh, my main motto is to get motivated the students who are right now in class 11 uh, just have uh, finished their class 10th exam whether they are in CBSE board, ICSE board or some state boards especially for them. But yes, it is a general lecture. So if you are not a physics student also, you can still listen. If you are a guardian of a student, then you should also listen. This is a lecture for all. This is a physics for everyone kind of thing this is the level will be very 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 uh, easy so i don't uh, assume that you know much physics i assume you have just have class 10 level of knowledge and here uh, we'll be uh, discussing the basic, very 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 basic physics things uh, before we start i'll be just uh, telling that uh, you don't have much things to read here. You won't have much things to write in your copy. Only thing I would expect from you that you please have take your time and properly listen to this lecture. I don't know how much time it will take. Uh, I believe that I will be finishing it uh, by two hours. So if you don't have two hours right now, you may pause this video, you may uh, have this link saved and watch in a later time. So I, I, I expect you to, if you start this, you will finish this. So okay, let's begin. So what is physics? Physics is natural phenomena, the study of natural phenomena. So what are natural phenomena? you see? You see sun rises, yes, this is a natural phenomenon. You see the glass breaks, yes, this is a natural phenomenon. You see that you heat a bowl of water, so it is, uh, it takes, uh, it heats, right? If you boil something, it heats. So if you, this is a making, uh, you are making sound, you are listening, you are turning off your, on your mobile, you are turning on your internet. Uh, and you are uh, listening to the YouTube. So this is a, everything is a natural phenomenon. So from our beginning, uh, when we have just started uh, our consciousness at the say at your age of three, four, five. So you have started to uh, watch things. You have started to listening to things, and you are becoming you are wondering that what are they. So there are many, many, many natural phenomena we see around. Say sun rises. Yes, water boils. Yes. And yes, there are lights. Natural phenomena. Yes, you see is a natural phenomenon you listen natural phenomenon so the study of all these things is basically physics physics is the study the interplay of matter and energy there are many things in matter and energy Physics is not, in general, the study of uh, biological living things. Physics is not, in general, the study of finance, economics. Physics is not, in general, the study of politics. But yes, all these things can be explained in terms of the 
interaction of matter and energy. So physicist may and yes successfully can study anything they actually want. For uh, my example, I am a professor in physics, but still I can study economics, I can study history, and yes, I can try to find what physical law or what physical and mathematical interplay may explain all this social, economical, political things in more ordered way. So, well, that is not the thing we will discuss right now, but this is just for your motivation that if you study physics properly to understand the mathematics, if you understand the natural law, you can. You can study anything you want. So, physics is the study of natural laws. Yes, there are many laws are there. What are laws? We will slowly, slowly, slowly explore. Well, so we start. I would start with examples of apples, pendulum and tide. Well, apples falls. You have all studied these things. You have all heard the story that apple falls. Everybody uh, seems to have uh, watching these things since prehistoric times. But there was a guy called Newton, the great, greatest of the great scientists, who watched this and thought, hey, why this apple is going down? It might have gone up. That's the question you need to ask. So, physics is watching the natural phenomenon properly and ask why these things are happening. You have seen pendulums. Nowadays, uh, most of the watch don't have pendulum. But pendulum is kind of uh, string uh, attached with uh, a ball in downside and fixed uh, the string in, uh, above some support. And this can go this, go this way, go this way, vibrates. So, say from this position to this position, pendulum vibrates. This is another phenomenon. You have seen tides. Have you ever gone to a sea beach? I guess most of you have. So, in uh, seaside, in seashore, you see the tides come. In the times of uptide, the sea level increases. In the downtide, sea level decreases. So there are tides. Apparently, these phenomena are three different phenomena. And most of the prehistoric people or the or the people before civilization, I, I should say that they have taken these things as taken for granted that well apple falls this is the rule uh, apple falls downward well this this is the things how ma the nature behaves pendulum vibrates well this is uh, the thing the nature behaves uh, that up tides come and the down tides go the sea level goes up and sea level goes down so well, this is how the nature behaves what's the problem in it no problem right but if you think closely, as Newton did, there is a common, there is a common thing in all these three natural phenomena. Yes, this is gravity. Because of gravity only, the apple falls. Because of gravity only, the pendulum vibrates in this way. Because of gravity only, the tide goes up and down. So, what is gravity at all? Yes, gravity means the masses attracts each other. There is earth, there is upper. Earth attracts upper, 
and yes apples also attract earth both attracts each other and we see apples falls why don't uh, we see the earth go to the apple just because earth have a huge mass so apparently earth also goes towards apple but that is very 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 tiny amount but as the mass of apple is very small we see the apple falls so when we will study the laws of gravitation in more detail we will we will numerically calculate the exact amount of the acceleration and exact amount of displacement but apple goes towards earth and how much earth goes towards apple well why this pendulum behaves this way yes there is also earth here earth attracting the pendulum in this position in this way in this position in this way all towards the center of earth that's why the pendulum behaves in this way and why for tides yes we have earth we have sun we have moon sometimes we do some this is a time of very high tide they are in a same line so the water in earth get attracted by both this is the water they are attracted by moon they are attracted by sun this attraction of masses makes this up and down tide happens so the one natural phenomenon the law of gravitation wave these three things together and explain all the three apparently different phenomena so the physics the basically what physics is physics is to observe the phenomena and explain all these natural phenomena in terms of very few natural laws natural laws are not in very not very high number there are very few natural laws and in this lecture we will learn the core heart of the basic natural laws so if you be with me till the end of the lecture you will definitely know what are the basic natural laws are arabic in although in your own uh, language and apparently uh, in your knowledge of class 10 Uh, up to your knowledge of class 10 i will be explaining you in the very lucid way so right now we have learned the laws of gravitation masses attracts masses so right. that's a very good law to start with now i will tell you the story of copernicus tycho brahe kepler and newton that just now i have told you the law of gravity how this law of gravity came uh, i will explain before we start the story i will tell you that uh, till my no, my present knowledge as far as my present knowledge is concerned gravity was known in some form i don't know what exact form is in some form maybe not as mathematically rigorous as newton's to ancient civilizations if you will be interested in uh, this history of science then i will be talking with you in some later time so right now what we will discuss is the story of uh, gravity in starting from copernicus but this line you should remember always 
that may not be as mathematically rigorous as Newton, but masses attract masses was known to in instant civilization in India, in China, in Tigris Euphrates, in Egypt, definitely it was known. Otherwise, the science, the structure, the architecture they did would not have been possible. Well, so long ago, the center, the uh, human being uh, started thinking uh, about the universe and they had uh, imagined the earth centric model long ago. Uh, they, uh, there was, uh, they saw the sun rises and set down, they have seen the stars. So that is quite natural to imagine that well, we uh, are the center of the world and all these celestial objects, all these things which we uh, view in the sky was revolving around us. But there was few people, I know who was the exact first, there was few people who started thinking differently. So Nicholas Copernicus was among them. He uh, thought that uh, no, the sun is might be the uh, more stable thing and earth and we were revolving around the sun. That he has got some logic on that, but he was not very much mathematical rigorous to prove it. He, uh, and uh, of course, this is not a story to be learned in detail here, but if you are interested, you can search in internet and see the Nicholas Copernicus page in Wikipedia. And uh, you will be la learn that what was the logic and what was the argument Copernicus gave at that time. The history of science is very, very, very interesting. I will again repeat. So at some point of time, uh, if you study physics properly, you also study the history of physics. There was a person called Tycho Brahe. What he did is, he had... Uh, Put the, uh, uh, he had written the data of the position of the stars, what he was seeing. So the person Tycho Brahe, what he did, he made a table. He made a list of positions of stars. So he had a huge uh, number of uh, notebooks to have all the positions of stars written in the table. Say this is uh, say this is eighth of April uh, and the evening of ten, uh, so the night of ten twenty. The this star is in this angle. This star is in that angle. So he made this table and a huge collection of notebooks. But he did not interpret it properly that how these positions of the stars can be explained. But this is the initial uh, structure of science. You need to have data. You, you first observe. So the, here the observation, observation was the stars is revolving around Earth. What you are seeing here from here that well the stars are, are in different different positions at different different times. They seem to circulate uh, and they seem to make their ang angular positions vary also. So this was a huge table. His students was Kepler. What Kepler did is, Kepler studies this data properly. So first thing is science to your observation. The table of observation that is very important. We need to have data, we need to have experiments and we need to record the data. This is we call record of data. That is very important for all of us. Then we need to interpret that data.
that thing was initially done by Kepler. And Kepler got three laws while this, uh, after studying these tables properly. He got three laws. We will learn the laws of Kepler properly uh, when we study the laws of gravitation. But Kepler uh, was very close to the actual law of physics, but he did not get it get the thing, he did not crack the exact thing, but he got three laws. We have uh, millions of observations from Brahe and from here the interpretation of Kepler gives three basic laws that uh, the revolution of the planet and uh, around the sun or the revolution of planets how this value goes, this goes elliptical. So, the Kepler's law is that there is an elliptical path and he was also there is another law that the rate of change of area is fixed. We will get into the detail when you study the gravitation, not in this lecture, but okay, someday you will study in your class 11 only the gravitation, you will see the all these laws. So, first law was that the path is elliptical, the rate of change of area is fixed and there is a relation uh, between the distance uh, between the radius and the time period. There is a distance between the radius and time period. Once again I utter that this distance varies with time period, higher the distance is higher the time period are. This was also I guess somehow known to the radiant sensibilization. So, these were the basic uh, Kepler's interpretation. So, interpretation the data may have many steps, may have many steps. What we always try to do is get closer to the truth, closer, more closer, closer, more closer. So, from the Tycho Brahe data tables, Kepler's interpretation reached us very close to the real truth. Kepler's three laws. And finally, this could be many, many, there could be many, many states. So, from this interpretation, finally, Newton came. Newton, well, the truth is masses attract masses. the truth. That is the final natural law. So, why we I give you that example is just to tell you how the science is actually made, how natural law of physics is actually fine. You need to have observation, you need to have a set of data, record of data. We need to study those data and interpret the data and not one, one single person will interpret data, one person will interpret the data, another person will interpret the data, one person will give some observation and will give some laws and some uh, arguments and some truth behind it, another person will give you another set of truth behind it, another person will come and then again he will tell you or she will tell you something. And the many, 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 many steps and many, 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 many interpretation give us will make will make us very close actual close of the truth is that all this thing happening all the tycho brahe data are actually because of the we are all the masses we have the our earth we have our sun we have our stars all they have mass and these masses attracts each other that's because hey dude that's because all these things are happening so, without this observation, without these data in hand, this thing would not have been possible at all. So, science, the study of science, learn physics, chemistry, biology, every science starts with the record of data. That is why you need to be very careful while you do laboratory experiment, very careful in observing and recording the data. Well, that's how the natural laws are being made. That's how the natural laws are being found. That's it. Well, we'll tell you another story.
now after studying uh, after knowing that how this uh, natural laws can be found what natural phenomena are what physics is what how the physical laws are found then we will tell you the story of mass and charge what is mass Truly speaking, we don't know what exactly mass and charges are. Truly speaking, we know very less about nature till now. Those who will tell you that we know many things, we know everything, almost everything. Uh, that is not the truth. The truth is we know very, 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 very little. Well, for you, what masses is? Well, you see, well, my weight is 80 kilos and I have mass. So, we uh, divide the, my weight by the gravitational constant small g and we get in my mass, well fine, that is the usual interpretation. So, mass is somehow related to, so how, here how do you, did you define mass? You defined in terms of weight, right? So, I uh, will give you uh, your mobile phone, uh, well, is this a mass? Uh, yes sir, this is a mass, there is a mass uh, on it, how do you know? Yes, I can feel his weight. I can feel uh, this has something. I can touch it, and if I touch it, I can I can feel the presence of something. I can say that yes, this is have a mass. So, for your knowledge, you we generally see mass or feel mass. because it has weight. Well, do light have a mass? No. Presume that light don't have mass. You can see light, right? I have a flash, a torch light on your eye and you see, well, there is a light on it. Something bluish. Nowadays, the LED light has some bluish uh, biasness. So, there is a bluish light here. So, and you see, well, there is light, but uh, don't the light have mass, right? So, everything what you see, what you see present, need not to have the mass. So, we define, I tell you, we defined mass in terms of its weight. Something have weight, you see. Some well, something have weight, then something have mass. So what? Uh, how we define mass is in terms of how much we defined mass in terms of how much attraction. with another mass it produces. There is another way. There is another way in terms of force and acceleration. We will study it later. But what is charge then? Can you see charge? No, sir. Suppose I give you a cricket ball and uh, they ask you, hey, does this cricket ball have charge? You see, sir, uh, I cannot tell. What I can tell is this ball has some weight. I can feel it in my hand. So, the ball have weight just because the gravity of earth, the earth is attracting the ball. So, that ball is giving a force downwards. That is the weight. That is why it is weight I feel in my hand. And yes, that is have a mass. But I cannot say by seeing in my eyes that whether this ball have a charge or not. The charge is something different from mass. We cannot see charge. Charges do not have weight. We don't just feel the charge in our hand by 
get you to wait. You don't. You can't. So why? Uh, how this charges can be determined, or how we can tell that whether something have a charge on that? In exactly same way, in uh, how mass wave has been defined, we know charge is defined somehow, or charge can be felt somehow in terms of again. How much attraction and repulsion with another charge do a charge produce? In terms of this, we know the amount of charge so you see uh, you have the some knowledge on charge that charge have two types must have only one single type charge there are two types of charge You see one positive charge and negative charge. Positive positive repulse. Positive negative attracts. Negative negative also repel each other. And there are some laws which are called the Coulomb's law to determine how much attraction these two charges produce. We will define the unit of charges. Say we define mass that 1 kg of mass, 500 gram of mass. And we will define 1 coulomb of charge. Something in this same way in our course later. But while we will studying these charges in plus 12. So for the time being, your knowledge should be that we have two different kind of charges, similar charges repels and opposite charges attracts and uh, there is a law which determines how much attraction and how much repulsion these charges will produce and if you ask what is charge we will say we don't know exactly but we can feel that there is charge just by taking another charge and see whether there is attraction or repulsion. So, the final answer is, if I give you a ball, cricket ball say, or something kind of this ball, something like that ball, and ask, uh, well, whether this ball have a charge or not, you will say, well, sir, give me a charge which is known, and then I will uh, take this charge near to this uh, ball, and if this ball attracts or ripple from that known charge, then I will know that, well, there is a charge in nothing else we can do so we don't know exactly what masses and charges are we can what we know is they follow some laws mass attract each other these charges attracts and ripple each other and by how much force they attract and ripple that also we know these these things we know but we don't know what exactly this thing are what i know what we know is these are properties of the nature these are properties of the particles what are the particles then of course you will know but these are the fundamental properties of nature masses and charges and when a very small particle produces the fundamental particles you have heard this name electrons protons neutrons so these are very 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 fundamental particles these are the ultimate things when you break, break something and you get this so the, when these particles are born they born with some charges and masses this very teeny particles. This is a fundamental property of nature. We don't know what exactly they are. So, be it very clear to you. Well, we will proceed. Charge current magnet. The story of Coulomb, Faraday and Maxwell. So, uh, right now, we started our knowledge with there are something called charges, suppose positive and negative, fine. Charges can move 
we can put a array of charges and we they can also move so the what current is current is nothing but moving charges moving charges produce this current so, so the magnitude of current is that you stay here say this is u you stay in this point and you are just counting how much charges passing through you in one second that is current Whew. that's it nothing else magnet you have seen magnet this is a magnet this is a north pole and south pole like charges this magnet also have some two different kind of poles north and south opposite poles attracts so you will come another magnet here this is north, this is south, then it will attract right? or if you have north north or south south so repel this is observation there is a very strong relation between current and magnet. You must know there is a very, very, very strong relation between current and magnet. In your future course, you will study what these relations are. Coulomb, the scientist actually framed this laws of attraction and repulsion of charges. He was a very great scientist. So, Coulomb's law what Coulomb did is law which determine the strength of attraction and repulsion. Between charges that Coulomb did. What Faraday did? He was studying some relationship between all these charge, currents and magnets. And then he suddenly uh, realized that if you move magnet, if you move magnet, uh, that can produce currents. That was very interesting law. Before that, it was known that, yes, currents uh, produces magnet, currents, uh, like this, you have also studied in your class 10, that if you have the current and you just, this, uh, this uh, electromagnet, if you have current and if you just curl it in some way, this thing behave as magnet, right? This is electromagnet. This is current flowing and this is electromagnet. So that relation was known, that phenomenon was known that if you curl a current, make a current loop, this can behave like a magnet. And then Faraday, some different interplay, yes, moving, the changing magnets can produce a current, can produce a battery kind of effect can produce, uh, can make charge move, right? Current is what? Current is nothing but a moving charges. So, moving magnet can move charges. If you move magnet somewhere, it can produce an effect of moving charges. Current is nothing but moving charges. So, if you are moving a magnet and if you see somewhere the charges as moving, so then you can see that yes, the current is producing. So, moving moving magnet can produce currents, can move charges. If you move a magnet, you are moving at some charges somewhere. 
that's a very interesting rule you learn this deep rule this rules in more detail of course and what maxwell did maxwell was a very great scientist one of the very great scientists in our world so what maxwell uh, do you see what maxwell tell you the similar kind of thing but just opposite here if you move magnet you can move charges right? and he told that well uh, you move charges you can create a magnetic magnetic effect or magnet somewhere so as faraday told you that moving you move magnet you move charges somewhere else you move and then he maxwell told you yes you move charges here you move magnet somewhere else so there is a very interesting interplay between the movement of charges currents magnets all they are related before we move to our next slide uh, i can tell you one thing but well uh, moving charges are current how much uh, velocity the charges move very small velocity if you switch this on uh, if you on your switch somewhere in your room and lights on in some different place that does not mean that charges are flowing very quickly charges are flowing very small speed the speed is very 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 small kind of 1 mm per second millimeter or less that is the speed of charge in current current carrying where charge the speed is very less but uh, how the, how to the, how to explain then the current uh, you you're switching on uh, in your uh, dining and the lights is uh, just on in your study room within a very 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 fraction of second well that is a very easy thing Mm, all these uh, wires are filled in with uh, electrons with charges you just switch it on all the all the currents all the charges that started moving together so the electron or the charge which was around in your uh, switch that charges need not to go to your bulb or your fan to make it on just it starts move all together every 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 charges together it just starts moving at the same time so they just starts moving when you switch it on the charges around the your bulb or your fan also starts moving that produces the current and that's why the circuit starts and your fan or light starts so all these interrelationship between this charge magnets and current you will be studying in your class 12 very good you proceed light what light is let there be light in your knowledge the light is well, the thing which make us see something yes that's light L how you see the things well how you see your book how you watch your book how you are watching your youtube uh, video in your mobile the lights from your mobile device coming to you in your eye the lights from your book lights coming from your bulb or light directly coming from sun light from your tube light uh, just uh, this is your book this is light coming from some source this is bulb well, this is your bulb and well this is your eye this is you light goes to your eye and you see this is the natural phenomena well, there are many things light in life light don't have mass how light travels very fast something very 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 fast very fast something 3 lakh kilometer per second this is very la very fast you know what 1 kilometer is 
you know what 100 kilometers 1000 kilometers are you might have traveled to kolkata to delhi or from delhi to kanpur kolkata to delhi is around 1500 kilometer delhi to kanpur is around 400 kilometer so that is a 3 lakh kilometer very huge kilometer amount per second light travels that's a very interesting thing light travels in straight line Not exactly. Light can bend. Yes, light can bend. We'll study. In general, in uh, most of the phenomena that we observe, it will be sufficient to say that light travels in straight line. But there are many phenomena in earth or you can observe, there are many observable phenomena where you can see that light can bend. So, light can bend small, not very huge bends that when you fight, you do bend, when you play football, you do bend. Not that uh, drastically it bends, it, but it bends. Light has a very interesting relationship between uh, with charge and currents, charge currents and magnets. Lights are related with that. We don't understand right now that well, light is a different phenomenon, and uh, your charges and uh, magnets are some different phenomena. How can they are related? Yes, they are related. When charges, suppose you have a charge, one positive and one negative charge, and just you keep it vibrates. Vibrating charge do produce light. It is a very interesting phenomenon, and you will prove it rigorously in your higher course of study. So, vibrating charges do produce light. The speed of light. One of the most important things in our physical law. This speed of light, this is a constant. Speed of light is constant. This constant means same everywhere in universe. It cannot change, it is same. Which means, so the performance of a player, performance of an athlete can vary. One day he can have a goal, another day he cannot make a goal. One day he can play very good, one day he can play very less. Your marks in one exam, it can be very high. In one exam, it can be very bad. But the speed of light is constant every time, every time. Whether you are switching on the torchlight in Earth or whether in Mars or in Neptune, some another person is uh, making some light, the speed are same. Whether the light is originating from sun, whether the light is originating from a distant star, the speed of light is same. Whether you are may, uh, switching on a Torch light here standing still on earth, or your friend who is uh, traveling uh, in a jet plane, in a Boeing plane from say uh, Mumbai to New York, 
he ha is also having a torch and he is making light he is also switching on the light the speed of the lights are same your torch light and your student your friend who are in the flight his or her torch light speed of light emerging from his or her torch and your torch light the speed is same 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 so that thing you keep in your mind very 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 importantly that it is light speed of light is constant is very high and same everywhere whoever whenever however is making a light the speed is same this thing is a very important consequences in our future course of physics well another thing in light in uni, uh, universe uh, everything you we have we have planets we have galaxies we we'll discuss you everything one thing is mass another thing is charge well charge we cannot feel but mass is there and another thing is light light have energy of course sunlight can heat your body up right torch light constantly make your body heated of course you have a convex lens and sunlight you just concentrate it in at some point it will heat and it can burn so light have energy while the universe was began it begins with mass and light light have frequencies wavelengths this we will study later but light have energy that you understand and universe is mostly composed by masses and lights this together is everything so most important things in our universe is mass charge and light yeah we will proceed we have many more things in our this video so i will complete it anyways so be patient if you have some different work to do make it pause watch later save this link of video in somewhere or you just search what is physics in youtube once again uh, of course you will keep this well I write my name also because what is physics uh, by this name many 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 videos may appear so then uh, you will again get this video well now we will tell you a different story how long can you break see so you break your mobile what you will see first you see the batteries the wires the small 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 and some different things which you may not understand you see some black 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 thing also inside you see some chip kind of thing all this thing you see you break a a paper piece of paper you break it break it break it you tear it tear it tear it tear it not much more you can do right some uh, this thing makes small and you will say well that's that's uh, that's the smallest thing i can tear this paper so the thing is when you break when you started start breaking something anything you break 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 there is a physical limit of your breaking that you cannot break it uh, very 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 smaller thing by yourself but still you can break it in some different techniques you can uh, have a machine or you can set some different techniques to break but after breaking anything you break you get it uh, some atoms you get it to some molecules so atoms and molecules are nothing but a small quantities there are you have see some there are prime element say oxygen hydrogen sodium there are some molecules like h2so4 two hydrogen one sulfur four oxygen so what i try to make you learn is break things some get prime elements but prime elements are not the thing which have the property intact 
property intact you know, molecules say H2SO4 this is acid right so say I have given you some acid some drops of acid so you see well this has a property this can burn man this can eat my uh, hands don't try it <laughs> but acid have a property to each make you each make your hand each right so this if you start breaking these drops to small 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 drop more small more small more small the most fundamental element you will see h2so4 this is a molecule this have the property of acid but if you break it again if you break it again you get 1h 1h 1s and 4O separately they don't have property of acid means they can't make you burn Only when they are together, they are forming this compound, they can make you burn. So, prime elements separately, they have some their own property, but when few molecules, few prime elements join together, they form a molecule, they form a complex element, they st start building some property by themselves. New, 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 new properties. Well, say, one carbon, two oxygen, they are separately three atoms, don't have much the important property, but if you make it together, CO2, this have an important property, carbon dioxide. But what if you make these things break again? break carbon, break oxygen, break hydrogen, what do you see? You see one proton, another prime, not a prime element, it is a fundamental particle, you see, and one electron. You break hydrogen, you see one proton, one electron kind of revolving around it. You break carbon, what do you see? four positive things, four neutral things, they are together here in a very dense uh, core and there are, I do not have a better to have a new slide here. This is a continuation of our previous slide. We will just copy it. So, what in carbon we have plus 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 some, then you will see electron. Sorry, this is we have six uh, plus, plus six electrons, six uh, six positive, six negative, six protons, six electrons. Say so here two more electrons. My handwriting is not becoming very good here. <laughs> So, carbon you break it, you say 6 electrons, 6 protons, 6 neutrons. 
so this electron proton every element every element you break you got some electrons protons neutrons so these three are fundamental particles in nature they cannot be broken well in your future course of physics you will see many things of that but for the time being you should have this knowledge that electrons protons and neutrons cannot be broken they are called fundamental particles they are called fundamental particles electron have negative charge proton has positive charge neutron has no charge the proton and neutron are around 1800 times heavier than electron roughly so electrons by mass is very small than this proton and neutrons protons and neutrons are at the center of the atoms they are at the center these are called nucleus and electrons revolve wow. although in my drawing you have you may have that feeling that the nucleus is very large and this orbit is also large but in the uh, ideal case in the real case this nucleus is very small and the periphery is very large Uh, how exactly what is this you can see uh, i will just make another slide this is very possible and once again i will just paste it here uh, say here if this is a if this is a piece or beam you see piece right beam or small say rajma <laughs> if this is a size of rajma is been and rajma the electrons which are moving around this is a size of football ground i guess i have given you right example uh, yes perfect so if the size of nucleus is the size of a rajma then the orbit of electron is then size of a football ground so that's the empty space in between there is a empty space you know most of the universe most of our universe is empty so that is you not need to be worried about most of the universe are empty so that's the, the imagination in the real life these are very 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 small how small is there there are units of making you the size of small size of big that i will tell you now you know what 1 meter is right you have a meter scale right you have seen 1 meter 3 point something feet right you have seen 1 cm you have seen 1 mm in scale so what is see 1 mm 
is 1 by 100 sorry 1 by 1000 of meter so we write it as 10 to the power minus 3 meter what this minus 3 means this minus 3 means that we are dividing 1 by 1000 1000 have 3 zeros here so we are dividing that's why this minus uh, this minus 3 signifies that we are dividing if you have plus then that, that would have signified a multiplication that we are multiplying here we are dividing 1 meter by 1 by 1000 so division makes this minus and you are dividing 1 by 1000 1000 have 3 zeros that's make this 3 so that's the 10 to the power 3 counts and we divide then you divide 1 meter or sorry 1 millimeter 1000 times What you get? You get 1 micrometer, 1 mu is 1 by thousands of meter, millimeter, 10 to the power minus 3 millimeter. And this becomes 10 to the power, 1 millimeter is 10 to the power 3 meter. So 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter, we write it as 10 to the power minus 6 meter. So that means 1 by 1000 into 1000 meter that is one micrometer that is very small you cannot see in your eyes a micrometer in your, if i draw a micrometer in a meter scale you won't be uh, able to read right because one millimeter is very small thousand one by thousandth of millimeter is cannot be read in a meter scale but i can see the radius of your hair Can you measure it? It is not exactly possible. It is a few micrometer. That can you, yes, the radius of some micrometer size can be seen in naked eyes. You can see your hair, one hair you can see. The radius of your 10 20 micrometer around it will be. If you divide uh, 1 by 1, if you divide 1000 times again, that is micrometer, you get 1 nanometer. So it's been 1 10 to the power minus 3 micrometer. This is 1 nanometer. So this is 10 to the power. The, the, in the same way, we divide it 1 time 1000 times once again. In the same 10 to the power 9 minus 9 nanometer. Sorry, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, 10 to the power minus 9 meter. We can divide uh, by 10, 1 by 10 of a nanometer is 1 amp strong. 1 by 1000 times of a nanometer is 1 picometer is then 10 to the power 12 meter is 1 picometer 1 by 1000 again picometer is 10 to the power minus 15 meter this is 1 femtometer fm this is the very smallest unit we use now in physics in general but of course we have some other unit some more you can divide one femtometer by 1000 times more and make another unit still one femtometer is fine the radius of the nucleus how small a nucleus is this is one femtometer this is one femtometer understand you divide 1 millimeter by 1000 times, it becomes 1 mic micrometer. You divide 1 micrometer by 1000 times, it becomes 1 nanometer. You divide 1 nanometer 1000 times, it becomes 1 picometer. You divide 1 again 1000 times, this has come on, become 1 femtometer. So that is around 1 femtometer is a new nucleus size. And this is actually 1 amp strong size. The radius of an electron orbiting a nucleus 
this is one m strong one m strong is how much one m strong is dividing nanometer by 10 this is one m strong or this is 10 nanometer 10 nanometer so the radius the smallest the very small thing we do very small thing we have learned in the atoms and nucleus that nucleus radius is 1 femtometer and electron orbit is 10 nanometer around so these are the very small things we study so how much uh, radius uh, how much uh, large uh, radius of electron from the radius of nucleus how much is one femtometer is 10 to the power minus 15 and uh, one armstrong is 10 nanometer this is 10 to the power 10 so 5 10 to the power 5 order this is uh, large 10 to the power 5 order so that's why i have seen this same, same centimeter to a football ground so this is a one centimeter then it is 100 of meter large so that's it uh, the study of uh, atoms in our future course we'll study all these things very properly that's how electron revolves around the nucleus why it revolves how this charge of positive charge of nucleus and negative charge of electron make this significant revolving of electron around the charge uh, this nucleus how much how the electrons are being uh, aligned uh, in this uh, around the nucleus that also we will study just a minute i will drink little bit of water now we'll have we have discussed the world of very small now we we'll discuss the world of very large the universe how big is it do you have a film how big the universe is how big the universe can be well let's see there was sun We have earth orbiting, we have a very outside this Uranus, Neptune, this is a solar system. How large the solar system is usually? So, 100, 100 crore kilometer or even larger. Do you know what a crore can be? Yes, 1 kilometer you know that 1 kilometer distance you have a thing, 1000 kilometer, have a thing, 1000 into 1000. Let me make a million that is in the index this is 10 to the power 3 1 after there is 3 zeros that is 10 to the power 3 here it will have 6 zeros 10 to the power 6 thousand into thousand into thousand that is billion 10 to the power 9 thousand into thousand into thousand into thousand it is trillion into the power 12 what one crore is crore is 10 million that is 10 to the power 7 So, 
in a one planet uh, so in one star the system the solar stars, the system of stars many stars have planets around it so one star and with his all surroundings is makes around a billion of kilometers in general little less little uh, more say 10 to the power 8 to 10 to the power 10 of a kilometer so that is then 100 crore to 1000 crore kilometer uh, 10 crore also you can say 10 to 1000 crore of a kilometer that is one planet sorry one star that is a huge the earth radius is 6 thousand to six thousand four hundred kilometer so distance between uh, sun to earth is around 15 crore kilometer so that is uh, 150 million or 0.15 billion or say you can say 10 to the power 7 and 15 for is 10 to the power 8 10 to the power 8 of a kilometer is sun to earth is 10 to the power 8 in physics we always study with this uh, the distances and measure with Everything we measure with the power of 10 to the power, 10 to the power 5 kilometer, 10 to the power 1 kilometer, 10 to the power 1 meter, 10 to the power minus 8 meter, we have just seen 10 to the power minus 9 meter, nanometer. In the kilometer also 1 billion kilometer, 1 trillion kilometer. And then we will see the light years, we measure distance in light years also. So you see. So that is uh, in the astronomical uh, sense, you see these are very large distances. 100 crore kilometers or 1 billion kilometer or trillion kilometers this is very large units so we make another unit which is called light year what light year is light year is nothing but light travels this is the distance light travels in one year light travels 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter a second meter per second that is the speed of light so in a year it goes 365 days 24 hours each hour 300 3600 second into 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter that is one light year. So you can write the number of zeros and you see but for a common sense the distance between earth and sun distance between earth and sun is how much minute? Some around approximately 8 light minute so light takes 8 minutes to travel from sun to earth that is the unit in light uh, distance that well this is the 8 light unit so that uh, you have uh, light years distance light travels in a year one year is a huge distance this is the 8 minute uh, compare 8 minute to a year this is a huge distance comparable to dark and sun distance one light year is a huge distance and uh, near uh, our very near there is a star Cyrus that is uh, the nearest star it uh, have a distance of four light years very uh, you can travel with the speed of light it will take uh, four years to travel from earth to that uh, our nearest planet uh, sorry nearest star so quite a very nearing distance neighbor right <laughs> so uh, as you see there are in astronomical units we are very large distances and we are very 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 small how much uh, stars we have in our universe can you count literally speaking we don't know exactly what we know millions and billions and trillions star forms a galaxy why i say millions billions and trillions we have six nine twelve there are many small galaxies large galaxies right so uh, in small galaxies there can be uh, millions of stars 
and uh, larger galaxies we have we can have 10 to the power 12 uh, kind of stars uh, and uh, galaxies how many galaxies we have in our observable universe uh, more than trillion of galaxies are there so trillion into trillion uh, of uh, 1 trillion into 1 trillion could be the number of stars that we don't know exactly so before we proceed i will show you some pictures which have made your understanding very more clearly so this is your earth the picture taken from the outside of the space so this is your uh, solar system there is sun the place of earth is in between this is a very larger space also behind you have a visual idea on that so this is your earth here uh, in, the, in the solar system okay okay this is a solar interstellar neighborhood some solar system is here some other planets uh, some other stars are there if you project it in a two-dimensional scale this will be like this uh, no this is not a projection i should guess this is this have some drawn some design style and limit up and down so well these are light years distance four light years ten light years hundred light years thousand light years this is a milky way galaxy and in the galaxy there is a core dense space in the periphery more periphery we go the density of the stars will become less somehow here our inter this this thing is somehow there this solar interstellar neighborhood the sun and the neighboring stars they are here sometimes sometimes in the periphery in the very small space in the periphery of the milky way well they are a local galactic group so galaxies there are many galaxies so here we have the milky way galaxy uh, and uh, well there is andromeda galaxy one of the very famous galaxy which are seen from the earth also naked eyes so and the, all the galaxies are here and there so local galactic clusters we have many galactic clusters so you see you have a galaxy then you have many galaxies in a group then many galaxies makes a super cluster so this is a local this is our local galactic group where this our galaxy milky way and andromeda all these are here and there are many galaxies here and there makes a cluster there are super clusters that was the cluster virgo super cluster there are local super clusters the virgo super clusters are here among it there are local galactic cluster and milky way galaxy many stars crores of stars trillions of stars and there are local super clusters all these are contain many 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 galaxies then we have a observability many super clusters of galaxies trillions of galaxies we have as far as you know observable means how much we can observe there are many things we cannot observe in our universe so there is an observable universe in between we have a very small place this virgo super cluster i guess you have some idea now that how large our universe may be so well uh, the story of universe is very 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 interesting so as we proceed uh, the universe is very big the age of universe and the size of universe we don't exactly know but at least this 13 billion light years is the radius of observable universe
there are much other unobserved space that much we know that at least 13 billion light years of universe we can see and we cannot see many 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 more things so the story of uh, physics is also this uh, it, take another slide here i will tell you some different, some other things also so the age of universe approximately 13 billion years before that we don't know but as far as our knowledge is concerned universe was born 13 billion years ago what is 13 billion 1300 crore years ago universe was born from where it born who gave it birth no one knows universe was born that much years ago that we know the size as we have already told you 13 billion you guess there is a connection between that 13 billion series is and we can see 13 billion light years of course that is very logical that before that we don't we cannot see so that 13 billion light years of observable universe universe is there universe have galaxies uh, planets stars matters electrons protons neutrons and empty space so that's the general unit of universe universe mostly are empty space say 99.999 many nine percent empty mass and light that's the main thing means matter and wave born out of a bang Kum, kum. like this as we will know matter and energy are convertible we have a phone i won't receive this phone i will send you a message so mass and energy are convertible in the beginning when universe was just taken birth or about to take birth in the beginning everything was concentrated in energy form or kind of a light I told you that I don't call me uh, just terminate okay let's turn So in the beginning uh, everything was in a very concentrated form fine that was in energy form from that energy matter ball that's the story so the universe that we have 
we have electrons protons neutrons they form a element they form prime ele element they form complex element from that element we born we have we are from this all this see you see carbon silicon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen water water so all these things make us so we form we and the bio, bio, other biological uh, living particles and the other non biological non living particles makes this earth earth make up solar system earth and sun and other planets millions of solar system kind of stars make a galaxy and millions of galaxies make a super clusters millions of super clusters make the super universe observable universe that's it most of the universe are empty and there are many things in the universe which we cannot see that's the story of atoms to universe right now you need to know in the first lecture when we will finish the study of physics we will be knowing many 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 things on that next what we have different type of forces the basic forces are gravity mass and mass attractive force there are electromagnetic force this is charge charge attractive and repulsive both there is a another force this is called nuclear force or strong force what they do they hold the nucleus as i have told you in a carbon in case of carbon we had six charged particle and six 1,2,3,4,5,6,1,2,3,4,5 in carbon in a typical nucleus it will be like that so there are positive charged proton so this positive charges and positive charges should repel and strong force hold this together this strong force hold it together or nullifies or cancels the proton 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 is positive i should write it just positive only proton proton repulsion so uh, there is another force weak force we don't know much uh, man, we right now at your stage we don't need to know much study later we will study that so these are the fundamental forces in nature and they just these are the forces they, we don't have other fundamental forces this is gravity this is electromagnetic this is mass mass attraction charge charge attraction repulsion another force which is holds this nucleus which cancels the positive positive repulsion of the positive charges in the nucleus this this is strong force and there is another force weak force which we will study later which is somehow related to the electromagnetic force that much we can see these are the forces which we will study in detail when we will <coughs> be more mature i will drink a little bit We have almost reached uh, our goal today. So we have discussed ev almost everything from atoms to the galaxies, the nature of physics laws, what is physics at all, to have you idea what is mass, what is charge, 
uh, and the currents, electrons, protons, everything. So, to end with, uh, we will say you what are the typical things you come across in your due course that the names of postulates, hypothesis, axioms. Although all the terms have some slightly different meanings and if you ask a mathematician, uh, she will tell you uh, the difference between these uh, terms. But in physics, uh, largely these are the same things. These are the laws of nature. There are some laws. Um, there are few laws of nature. Which we can't prove. We take it granted. Take as it is. As it is. Like the law, Newton's gravitation law. Mass attract mass. This is a posture. We can say this is a hypothesis also and say this is an axiom also, whatever you tell. We cannot prove it. We just can't prove that mass attracts mass. We don't actually know. Why mass attract mass? So, in nature, in physics, what we have started learning in very uh, early in this class, that uh, these uh, three things, that we have started with three phenomenons, uh, the tide, the pendulum and the other. Behind all the three phenomena, there are law of gravity, law of Newton's law of gravitation, mass attract masses. That explains the phenomenon. But what explains the law itself? What explains the thing that why mass attract mass? We don't know. We don't know. This is a law. So the work of Physicist is explain every natural phenomenon in terms of very few laws. Newton's law of gravitation is one law. The Coulomb's law, charge attracts and uh, opposite charge uh, attracts, similar charge repel, that is another law. The uh, what else? Uh, this uh, Maxwell's and Faraday's laws, moving charges, uh, moving currents, moving charges produces magnet, magnet moves magnet, moving magnets moves uh, somewhere. Uh, the charges this moving uh, so this Faraday and Maxwell's law that's another law which is natural laws of nature we cannot prove but this prove so this strong force there's something holds the nucleus this is another law so there are very few laws if you ask me that how many laws are there you say. so we can write it down in two three four pages max to max so the laws of nature is are not very there are large number of laws not like that there are very few laws and the physicists are working to make these laws more 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 precise more 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 smaller laws that we should not have many 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 laws the laws of nature which actually governs the everything 
and they should be very small number of laws so the primary task of the physicists right now is to make the laws more uh, simple to make the to reduce the number of laws write the laws in very cryptic and small forms so that everybody understands so what laws i told you today all these laws of gravitation and this uh, laws of charges and magnets these are uh, this can be explained in very uh, small and lucid terms how i did but uh, there are many other laws also which i could not explain to you at your level right now so physicists are working to make make uh, physics understandable to everyone so that much i can tell you so what we have learned uh, then we have learned then the task of physicist is to explain the naturally occurring events in terms of very few smaller simple laws and physicists are continuously working with that that's it and uh, finally uh, i will say you uh, interesting uh, things of conservation uh, many things conserve in nature why this thing conserves we don't know conserved in nature and many thing does not what thing are conserved mass plus energy together we will call it mass energy because these are convertible mass can form destroy and create energy energy can produce mass so mass energy is a thing which is conserved charge the total number of charge in universe is conserved and there are many things many 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 things mass energy and charge are the most important two things which are conserved in nature there is uh, there are many more things you will understand you will see slowly so another thing is momentum which is conserved there is this is called linear linear you will go ta in a straight line you go that is called linear momentum there is another thing you will learn that is angular momentum which is also conserved this is related to rotation and this is coming to linear motion or motion in straight line etc so these conservation laws are related why these are conserved we guess we have some answer according to the conserve why why these things should be conserved and why are they conserved so we cannot directly answer but what we can answer is as related to the fundamental properties of universe how we have see we have some laws of nature nature have some laws they are same everywhere means if you go along a straight line from earth you go along a straight line wherever you go the laws are same right this is our property if you go if you rotate you hear you go angular rotation every here you go everywhere the laws are same you go or you go, uh, we can say you in some way that you go this uh, side you see the everywhere the laws are same you go this side everywhere laws are same you go that side everywhere laws are same so these are called homogeneity and isotropy of the universe you should learn these two terms in the very beginning homogeneity and isotropy of the universe means natural law uh, are same if you go in a straight line wherever you go 
nature is homogeneous the laws of nature are everywhere same isotropy means direction there is no directional bias you go this direction you should get same kind of setup law you go this direction you go you get same sort of law you go this direction you get same kind of laws everywhere that is isotropy and there is another thing that is for time invariance means the laws of nature the laws of physics which are today the laws are here 10 billion year ago the same laws were there 10 billion year more the laws of physics will be same so that is laws of nature do not change in time well these conservation laws are somehow related to these properties the conservation of mass energy is related to time invariance we can say that the laws of nature do not change in time that's why your mass energy is conserved we can say it safely no problem in that for charge the symmetry will cannot uh, tell you right now in say five years later i will tell you <laughs> and uh, the linear momentum is conserved this is something related to linear momentum is nothing but uh, mass into velocity angular momentum is nothing but mass into velocity into radius of the rotation you will say it you will learn it in rigorously in your upcoming courses so the conservation of momentum is somehow related to the homogeneity of the universe the laws of nature are everywhere same if you go in a straight line the conservation of angular momentum is somehow related to the isotropy of the universe that which direction whichever direction you go you will see that you will get the same set of laws so that is the story of the symmetry and conservation laws so i should write this as conservation laws and symmetry so there is a strong relation between symmetry and conservation that i told you so that is how much i wanted to tell you in this first lecture so i presume that you are the class 11 12 students or bsc first year students who are watching this video so i guess uh, that had uh, you given you some idea about what physics is and what uh, we do study in physics in your due course so uh, should you begin our journey uh, should you begin uh, the study of physics yes or no i suppose that if you have started learn if you have watched my video very carefully with attention then you must say yes say loudly yes more loudly yes to say yes then it is done then your journey will be starting right now the wonder of physics the real 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 wonder is starting the real 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 wonder is waiting for you so then uh, we'll finish this lecture today finally who is the person who just delivered the speech who am i well um, i am sek jahiruddin is my name i am an assistant professor of physics in a college I have studied in Jadavpur University and IIT Bombay. My physics courses was there, so you can contact me. Of course, you can contact me in WhatsApp. That is my WhatsApp number. This is my email ID. You can contact here also. So that's it. If you like it, you can have a message that well, sir, we have learned a lot. We have become we have become interested. in studying physics so please continue and well then i will again continue with my some speeches some topics okay then fine bye bye have a very nice day